mankind would seek the Lord as he seeks his business. If we would seek the Lord as we seek pleasure, position, position, and things. If young people would seek the Lord as we do the fascination and the thrills of the flesh and the allurements of the bright lights of the world, then our hearts would thrill with attainment and satisfaction like never before. I've come home to tell this church, if you want true happiness, you must seek Him. As the oil man seeks oil, as the gold digger seeks gold, you must seek the Lord. I know preaching down there on Tuesday night, there was a supernatural anointing that came upon me. In fact, I am going to preach part of that message in the next few services. But there was such a hunger while I was preaching to that congregation. I started preaching to myself about being pursuant of the Spirit of God. About going after everything that God has for me. I am never satisfied with where I am. I am never satisfied with the place that I am in God. In that beautiful area of South Africa. A couple of days before we started that conference. I was driving outside of Johannesburg with Brother Richardson and Brother Katsia and Gentry. And I looked over this place and I said, what is that in that ground? And smoke was coming out. And Gentry was inquisitive and so was I. And he told me that is the largest platinum plant in the world, which means platinum is twice the price of gold. And you will see all up and down that highway. You will see men and women up and down the fields there outside of Johannesburg. They are looking for just little sparkles or element of gold. People live out in shanties, hoping as you would at Marksville or Tinder to hit the lottery. They think that they're going to find gold. Or they think that they're going to come across a diamond from Africa that is going to make them wealthy for the rest of their years. I wish there was some way that I could show you some of those places that I visited before our choir or staff arrived. I wish that I could show you how people are pursuing something, no doubt that most of them will never find. Yet I thought of my God, and I thought of the greatness of God, and I thought of the goodness of God, and I thought of the peace of God, and I thought about the blessings of God, and I wanted to pursue Him. I want to go after God as that gold miner is going after gold. I want to go after him like the platinum man goes after platinum. There is no greater thing than having Christ ruling your life. There is nothing more enjoyable. There is nothing more peaceful than Christ ruling. I, I sort of feel like this morning of seeking him as the prodigal son did his father and his father's house. The Bible says when he came to himself in a pig pen, that he got up and he ran home. And he confessed his sins to his father. He said, I did wrong when I left home. Now I'm dissatisfied. I am spent. I am beat. And all is gone. I didn't find what I felt I was going to find when I left our house. And he said, I have come back home. So the Lord knew, guys, that this was going to happen. So he said, I'm going to draw you up something here. I'm going to show you something that you will have reference to. I'm going to show you something that you can go back to. And so he allowed Matthew to begin to write in the 13th chapter. He said, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure that is hid in a field. 1344 of Matthew. The which when a man findeth. He hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and he buyeth that field. The day labor bought the whole field to get the treasure. And again, Jesus says in verse 45 and 46 of Matthew 13, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man 
seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had, and he bought that pearl that was of great price. Jesus is saying, when the merchant man seeking goodly or fine pearls, when he found one of great price, the pearl of great price, a pearl beyond all other pearls, he went and sold all of his other pearls, paste pearls, for the real thing, the pearl of great price. Jesus told these two stories about people coming to God. The parable of the hidden treasure. The parable of the pearl of great price. When you look at that first story, here he is tired, he's weary, he's hungry, he's trying to finish a day's work. A man is just out in the field and he's plowing. And all of a sudden, his plow runs in to something. And when he goes to the end of his plow, he finds there a jar. And when he pulls up that jar or that vase and he looks at it, that vase is full of gold. Suddenly, he is excited. Suddenly, he begins to look at this jar. He places that jar back in the ground where he found it. He covers that jar up. And then he heads for the landlord. For by law, he was not required to tell the owner of his find. For it had been buried years before by the ancient Amorites. And now it was finders, keepers, if you own the land. So he leaves there that afternoon after a day of work. And he runs with joy. And he's beside himself. He knows that his whole life is about to change. He knows everything in his life is getting ready to turn around. So immediately, he sells everything he has. He may not have a whole lot, but what little bit he has, he sells it all. And he comes back to that landowner. I don't know what all he sold. I don't know what he had to separate himself from, but he got rid of it all. And he comes back to that landowner. He said, sir, I want to buy this field. And that landowner put an astronomical price on that field. That man said, no problem for me. This field is very valuable to me. And that man who was at one time plowing in the field. That man that was at one time working for another man plowing a field now has him a field. But he forgets about that field because inside that field, he knows right where that treasure is. That's going to make him one of the most wealthiest men in that community for the rest of his life. He found it accidentally. He stepped up on it, not on purpose, but accidentally. But he knew the value of that. And he said, I will sell everything I have, and I will go purchase that field. Many by circumstance, by sudden revelation and providence of God, Jesus Christ invaded our lives. I love the book of Romans. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 20, it tells us that a lot of us was found by those who were not even seeking Him. In other words, He found us when we were not even seeking Him. He came and took on us when we were not wanting to take on Him. Many in the Bible have encountered an ultimate treasure of God and an invasion in their life. I got to thinking when I was finalizing this message, how would you like to be out in the field taking care of sheep? And all of a sudden angels start saying, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Those shepherds wasn't looking for the Christ child. Those shepherds wasn't looking for a church service. Those shepherds wouldn't look for a stable in Bethlehem. They were out there taking care of their sheep. 
But out of nowhere, there came an angel singing. I am going to introduce you to a Christ. I look at so many in this room. I look at where 